cameras on the whole time? Only when you're presenting. Okay. All right, let's take a look. Uh, attendee, I like to give them a little bit of time to pile in. So after I'm done presenting, I'll just go off camera, turn and on mute. The... Yeah. Yep. And mute. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'm just going to get started. So this is session three of Team Light's uh, Summer Fair. If you made it with me this far, that's great. We went on a great journey together. Um, so for this session, there are going to be six um, uh, presenters, and we're going to hear all about their programs. Uh, one of the presenters will be a video, and so I'll be handling that on my end. Um, now, remember, attendees, that this is a webinar, so you are muted, your cameras are off, we can't hear you, we can't see you. So if you have questions, please pop into the Q&A. Um, if possible, please uh, write who you're directing the questions to. It can get a little bit long, and so we don't. We want to make sure that you guys have your questions answered. Okay, and then if we're all ready to start, we're going to begin with the representative from Purdue University. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Kristen Seward. I'm a clinical associate professor in gifted, creative, and talented studies at Purdue University, and I'm co-director at the Gifted Education Research and Resource Institute here at Purdue. I'm here to talk primarily about our summer residential program for grades 5 through 12, although we do have day camps in June for um, kindergarten through fourth grade students. So what I'm here to talk to you tonight is about the top 10 reasons why you should attend Purdue's summer residential program. Number 10, every July for over 40 years, Purdue's Gifted Education Research and Resource Institute, or I will say JERI for short, program has engaged gifted, creative, and talented students from across the country and around the world in residential camps designed to stimulate their imaginations and expand their abilities. Our students live in campus residence halls, take challenging courses, and participate in engaging recreational activities. Number nine, Hoosier Hospitality. We are in West Lafayette, Indiana, that is in the Midwest, and our Hoosier, H-O-O-S-I-E-R, hospitality is about um, the kind of folks we are in Indiana. We're very welcoming, helpful, friendly, very gracious. So that's a great reason to come and spend the summer with us. Number eight, we are a Big Ten campus in a great city. Of course, Purdue is known for engineering and agriculture, as well as veterinary medicine, pharmacy, and nursing. Purdue has graduated more astronauts than any other university in the United States, and we're pretty proud about that. Number seven, you should attend because of our mascot. This is Jerry the giraffe, and he's so adorable. So you have to come and get one for yourself. Number six, the campus facilities. Uh, Purdue being a Big Ten University, big campus, we have high tech, state of the art facilities and classrooms and uh, science labs and computer labs. Um, we have a relatively new co-rec facility that we use during camp. We stay in a new honors college dorm, which is very nice. And our dining halls, believe it or not, have won awards for our food. So definitely a, a big draw uh, for our summer campers. Um, number five, our courses. We are an academic enrichment camp. This means we do not uh, have programs for credit, for college credit but we're a two week academic enrichment camp. Um, our classes are full of intellectual challenge, hands-on projects and engaging activities, but our program is more than just challenging and engaging curriculum. We also highlight affective curriculum. This is uh, conducted in the evenings where uh, campers get together with students their own age and in their um, groups and they talk about certain things that are social and emotionally related as far as being a gifted student where they are and within their families. And so um, a lot of our campers have come away saying, you know, I really didn't think I would like talking about stuff, but I really liked talking about stuff and finding that there are a lot of other uh, students out there who kind of feel the same way I do in a lot of different areas. The fourth reason, our staff. 
Uh, we have, you will receive personal attention from talented and caring faculty and staff members and enjoy small class sizes. So you'll get to know a professor or graduate student who's teaching a course. You'll get to know our Jerry staff. As a matter of fact, Purdue's program is run by graduate students in our gifted, creative, and talented studies program. So we are very invested in working with gifted students. We are a not-for-profit organization, so we don't plan to get very big. We want that personal touch. And when you return year after year, and you'll want to after you come once, um, we want to know you by name and welcome you um, every summer. Uh, the third reason. Um, the additional activities and experiences that we have outside of the classroom. So I've talked about the award-winning food and the newish dorm and the honors college and the small group bonding, but we also have fun things like fountain runs and fun competitions. Um, and this is just a chance to experience college life while you're getting to know students who are very much like you, who get you, who use big words and no one looks at them strangely. So um, we hope you'll enjoy uh, some extra time on campus and just kind of get the feel for being a camp or a college student for a couple of weeks. The second reason to meet new friends from around the world. Um, we are a global community here. We uh, have amazing cultural encounters. One of my favorite events is called the Global Gala and Talent Night. And this is where students from around the world bring a part of their culture to share with the rest of us here at camp. And so I always look forward to that and it's a great time. And the number one reason why you should attend Purdue's Jerry program is the memories. The memories that you'll cherish for the rest of your life that will endear you to our beautiful campus. We're all red brick buildings here, it's beautiful. Our top-notch teaching and counseling staff and your new friends. So registration opens February 1st. We'll be uh, promoting our brochure in about mid-January after the holiday break. Um, the sessions will be in July, two-week sessions, two of them. So July 2nd through the 15th, and then July um, 16th through the 29th. For younger students, however, they're one-week camps, and that would be July 2nd through the 8th and July 9th through the 15th. Of course, visit Teen Life. You can watch a really cool video there about our camp, and um, you can find all your links uh, that you need there as well. So I hope that um, you've enjoyed my little top 10 presentation as to why you need to attend Purdue University's Jerry program. All right, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> coming up next is the representative from Where There Be Dragons. Hi everyone, my name is Emily and I'm here with Where There Be Dragons to tell you about our immersive, responsible and educational travel programs. So a little bit about Dragons. We've been running programs for nearly 30 years. Um, we started in Asia and now have programs in Asia, Africa, Latin America, and the US. We run four and six week summer programs for high school and college students and three month gap year programs. And many of our programs also offer college credit. So Dragons programs have two main goals. They're very place focused and also focus on our students. When I say place focused, what I mean is we run programs that aim to honestly immerse students in the areas they're traveling. We hope they're able to develop meaningful relationships to the people and places they meet along the way. When I say self-focused, what that means is we know that travel is a powerful teacher. And we want to use our travel experiences to push students to learn more about themselves and their values, as well as gain new skills and perspectives while on program that they can take back home with them. So what does Where There Be Dragons mean? Map makers once drew dragons to represent lands unknown, and bold explorers who ventured to the map's edge were said to, said to go Where There Be Dragons. Today, this means that we're taking students to places that are off the tourist map and having them hear and witness lesser known stories and realities. And it's also about finding new and unexplored places within themselves. So what makes dragons unique? 
Our programs are custom crafted and one of a kind, meaning that we never run the same program twice. And that's because we have expert instructors. Our instructors have five to 15 years of experience in country or they're from that country, really taking students to their homes and second homes. We run in small groups of 12 students and three instructors. Our programs are fun, adventurous, and they have depth. And we always have responsible travel on our minds. Oops. So a little bit more about our programs is they're educational, meaning our students will learn about the history, politics, culture, human rights, and development issues in the region. They're experiential, meaning that students won't be in a classroom, but they're really getting hands-on experience. All of our programs consist of nine program components, which make the courses really holistic and really differentiate one course from another. Our courses have course themes, which are the focus of inquiry, which I'm gonna go over on the next page. They're fun, but most importantly, they're safe. So here are nine program components that make up each one of our courses. Rugged travel, homestays, meaning students stay one-on-one -on -one with local families. There's language study, but you don't need any previous language experience to come on one of our programs. Trekking that ranges from day hikes to epic hikes, depending on the program you choose to go on. Learning service, which is how we do volunteering here at Dragons. We wanna learn from the communities we go into first and then do service. Independent study projects where students really get to choose a passion project that they wanna explore more within the region and get linked with local mentors to do so. Comparative religion, development studies and the focus of inquiry, which are the main themes that make up each course. So who are our students? Our students come from all over the United States and the world. And what really ties them all together, no matter where they're from or what experiences they've had in the past is they're curious. They wanna really dive deep into the places that they're going on course, ask questions and just really be present wherever they are. So if you're interested, um, we have a rolling admissions at Dragon, so our courses cap out at 12 students, but none of our cl courses close until they're completely full. Um, and also on our website, something that's pretty helpful is if you're going on a gap year or summer program, we have program prep materials if you're just looking to travel in this type of way. So where do you wanna go? So below is my email, emily at wherethereBedragons.com. Um, check out our website, wherethereBedragons.com. We have a student blog called the Yak Board on there. And the website will just give you more information about all of our programs. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you, Emily. Um, now remember everyone, you can uh, pop a question in the Q&A for any questions you might have to any presenters as they come up. Uh, the next presenter is uh, is um, based in, in the UK. So they're uh, asleep at this point, which is great. And then, so I'm gonna go ahead and post the video that they have asked for me to share on their behalf. Okay, here we go. So this is a program called Oxford Royal Academy. Hello, my name's Clark McPhee, and I'm here to talk to you today about Oxford Royal Summer School on the camp that we run on the campuses of the University of Oxford, the University of Cambridge, Imperial College London, and Yale University. Our summer schools are very international. In fact, we have students from over 170 nationalities that have been on the program since we first started uh, in 2004. So this means you may be in a class with a student from Brazil, from Egypt, from Saudi Arabia, Australia, China, the US, and you're learning with, from those students as you study together and enjoy the program together, but you're also making an international network that will stay with you for many years to come. Our students come from the top uh, international schools around the world, so they're ambitious students like you. And one of the things the students enjoy most about the program is making friends from all over the world. Um, if you don't get a chance to travel the world, the world will come to you at Oxford Royal Academy. 
There are five main components to our program. The first one is the inspirational study environments that, that you're in. So we only run programs in the top universities around the world because we want students to be inspired by their surroundings. Um, so they're living, studying, sleeping in the same university campus that 30 British prime ministers and countless Nobel Prize winners have been in. And being in those amazing uh, institutions is a great uh, inspiration for the students. It really drives them on and it helps them become more ambitious to try and achieve uh, success and to get into those top universities themselves. Our programmes um, run at the moment at the University of Oxford, the University of Cambridge, Imperial College London and Yale University. So students get a taste of what it's really like at those universities. We run a wide range of programmes from engineering to business to law to film academy. There's something for everyone. The programmes are all focused on the future of work, the future of the industry. So there's no point in learning about engineering today. What you need to be learning about is what will engineering be like in five years, 10 years or 15 years when you're out working in the field. And to do that, we also enable the students to learn in a very interactive way. It's not like learning at school. You'll have a combination of academic lectures, workshops, masterclasses and educational trips. So, for example, if you're on a medicine program, you may start in the morning by learning about diabetes as a disease or about the human respiratory system in a typical university style lesson. Uh, but then you may go to a workshop and you'll go to the university's simulated hospital, the medical labs, and you'll do some practical experience, practical work. You might learn to suture a wound, resuscitate somebody using dummies and, and the latest hospital equipment at the university. And then you may have a, a masterclass where a guest speaker will come, somebody who's an expert in their field, to talk about uh, a particular topic of interest. So maybe in medicine, uh, pandemics and how do we cope with pandemics? What do we learn from COVID? When is the next pandemic coming from? Uh, and how can the field of medicine learn to, to cope with these kind of situations in the future? You're then maybe going on an educational trip. So you'll go to visit a hospital, talk to doctors and find out what it's like to be a doctor. What are the challenges they face? Um, how did they get into medical school? The students find it very interesting talking to, to doctors about their profession. So it gives them a really good all round experience of medicine as a subject, which if you're looking to go to medical school, will really help you when you complete your university application. So it's a very interactive way of learning. The other thing that's very important is that you learn from experts in, in their field. So we choose top academics from the top universities in the UK and abroad. So it could be from Oxford or Cambridge or Yale or Harvard, um, or other top universities, but also we choose them for their ability to inspire students from 13 to 18 years old. It's not just enough to be an expert, you have to be able to inspire students and, and, and have that infectious kind of enthusiasm for the subject that the students can then take on. But it's not all study. Um, the programme also has a lot of enrichment activities, cultural activities, so you'll have sports that you can play. There's basketball, football. Uh, they have athletics and an Olympic competition between the colleges. So sports, your thing. We have plenty to do. We also have um, tours of Oxford and Cambridge. You see some fantastic museums and, and some places of history in the UK. It could be a castle at Warwick. It could be a trip to London to see the capital. So there's so much to do during the day. We make sure that the students are kept busy and entertained. You also have a chance to sign up for activities in the afternoon. So you may decide you want to go ice skating or you might want to attend a lecture from some visiting guest speaker. So you have a lot of choice. In the evening, we run quizzes, talent shows, karaoke evenings. Uh, we have discos. We have formal dining uh, events. So every Friday um, we have what we call formal hall in, in the universities, which is a traditional Oxford and Cambridge University uh, dining where they have a candlelit dinner. They'll dress up in their suits and, and ties or, or dresses for the girls. And it's a really wonderful event. Um, it's also a very safe environment. So we have students and staff on the campus together. They're enclosed on the campus. So the students study and live in the same campus and they can't leave the campus without going past the security 
and the porter who's on the gate to make sure that nobody can come onto the campus or leave the campus without signing in or signing out being allowed to do so and um, we have our counsellors that stay in the in the dorms as well so they're sleeping in the dorms to make sure that students are going to bed when they're supposed to obeying the curfew and that everyone's enjoying themselves why would you choose Oxford Royal Academy? Well, we, we say we're the best in the business. We've been around longer than anybody else running this type of programme in the UK, and we've won more awards than anybody else with uh, the, the Queen's Award three times, the Best Educational Product Award five times, uh, and we're accredited by the British Council. So that's it, that's Oxford Royal Academy. Um, check out our website for more details on the courses, and please do watch our latest video, which gives you a great idea of what we do and what we're about. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Um, so the next presenter uh, is representing Univers University of Pacific. Hi, everyone. Um, I hope you can uh, hear me and you can also see our, see our slides. Uh, my name is um, Professor Balin Staroy. I'm a chemistry professor at University of the Pacific. I'm also the faculty athletics representative. And today I'm here as the director of the Pacific Summer High School Institute. And um, let me tell you a little bit about the um, Institute itself. Um, our goal is to give um, high school students an in-depth preview of actual college life um, at one of the uh, nation's top student-centered small universities. Um, and so the way um, we designed this program is to give you the full taste of a college experience. So first of all, you get to stay on the beautiful campus in California of the University of the Pacific, get to enjoy a little bit of California weather. And uh, our campus is quite small. It's just the right size for high school students to have a safe environment. You get to study with peers from across California and the nation, as well as international students who come to our campus to um, enjoy these uh, two week sessions here. You actually get to learn from uh, Pacific professors. So our uh, program is not run by independent contractors. It is actually run by um, our own professors um, in our nine schools and colleges and even the university library with maker spaces. You get to live in our campus residence halls, same places where our college students stay uh, during the regular semesters. And so let me give you a little bit of um, highlights on the 23 Summer Institute. Um, we'll have two two-week sessions, one in early June, um, kind of like um, right after the high school uh, school year ends, uh, one from June 16th to 17th, and then the next session is from June 20th to July 1st. Both sessions end on Saturdays with presentations when your family is encouraged to come and see what you have learned uh, over those uh, two weeks. We'll offer more than 50 cutting edge, hands-on academic music and athletics programs. Um, the disciplines are as diverse as you know, uh, game design or dentistry, pharmacy, astronomy. Um, we'll have various music programs and several athletics programs offered by our division one intercollegiate athletics program. Um, you get to learn leadership skills, make lasting friendships uh, with, um, we're planning for close to a thousand students per session in, um, in the next summer. And you get to enjoy the beautiful California summer here. And um, if you haven't seen our campus yet, it looks like um, Ivy League campus on the, uh, on the West Coast. Um, so a little bit about our academic programs. So we already have more than 40 academic programs. And we are developing more as uh, enrollment progresses. Um, we'll have programs in uh, performing and visual arts. Um, we'll have several programs offered by our business school, and we have several uh, social science programs as well. Um, Pacific is traditionally very strong um, in health related programs with our dental school, pharmacy school, and our school of health studies. So we have several health related programs as well as natural science uh, courses. And our engineering uh, school will have several technology related courses. But that's not all. Um, starting this year, our Division I Intercollegiate uh, Athletics Program is also participating in a summer institute and will offer nine different sports. 
Um, and some will be in both sessions, some will be in session one and session two. And this includes even water polo. Um, I'm not sure how many of you know, but uh, Pacific is actually one of the uh, uh, top schools um, in water polo. We actually made it to the final four this year, and only lost to the eventual um, national champion. And so all these, just like the uh, academic courses will be run by our top professors, this will be actually run by division one athletic head coaches. And uh, living in a summer institute, uh, as I said, you will be uh, staying in um, our residence halls, which are center campus. So you'll be close to uh, all the various uh, um, enrichment opportunities that our campus offers, um, both the dining facility, theaters, our library with its maker spaces, and the various recreational athletics facilities are all within a short walking distance. And we're organizing uh, very many evening and weekend co-curricular and social activities for you. This includes uh, movies under the stars and even in the pool, um, recreational sports tournaments and other sports um, opportunities, arts and crafts, karaoke. And uh, last year I even hired a DJ uh, for our students uh, to run a DJ set where they could dance and that was very popular. Um, so every um, evening and afternoon and over the, uh, the weekend, there are so many social programs to connect with your peers. These are some students' testimonials from our, our last year, which was the inaugural year for the Summer Institute. Um, students kept reporting how these were the best time of their life and, uh, and the overwhelming transition was that they want to come back again and uh, they didn't want to go home. They, uh, they wanted a third week, really. And so I uh, hope you'll feel similarly when you attend next year. Um, to learn more about the program, uh, there's uh, plenty of good information on the uh, Clean Life site, but also um, we have detailed information about every academic and athletics program on our website. And then every week on Wednesday at 6 p.m., we hold um, virtual Q&A sessions. And so with this QR code uh, that you can later access on Clean Life, um, you, can access, you can register for these Q&A sessions. And... Um, and you can ask more about the program. So thank you so much for uh, attending this presentation and hope that uh, we'll see you in California next year. All right, thank you very much. Um, the next presenter is a representative from Breakwater Expeditions. Oh, you are muted, Angie. Okay, hopefully you can hear me now. Um, I'm Angie and yep. I'm going to talk to you about uh, Breakwater Expeditions and what we have to offer teens this summer. Um, first off, a little bit about us. We were founded in 2011 and our mission is to support individuals, groups, and families get in touch with their wild side. We have custom guided experiences that will inspire, rejuvenate, and cultivate the change that you're looking for. We have over 10 destinations that we frequent across the country, including um, some international spaces. Uh, Todd McKibben and myself are owners, and we work full time for the company. We're a small uh, uh, company here in North Idaho, Sandpoint, Idaho, is where I'm at. Um, so let's uh, go a little bit more into who we work with. Obviously, the teen summer trips that I'm going to talk about is part of the groups. We also work with families and businesses, clubs and nonprofits. A lot of our clients are also schools and programs. So outside of our teen trips, we're also working with teenagers in their programming and their schools. Um, and then we have a third component of professionals that we work with. So therapists, life coaches, photographers, people who want to take their vision into the backcountry and um, get out of the office and uh, teach people their programming. So let's jump into it. The first trip in the summer is our river and rocks trip. Um, it is an expedition in Utah. It's a canoeing expedition as well as canyoneering. Um, it's also our trip that we celebrate the 4th of July. Um, and it is um, uh, in Utah, starting and ending in Salt Lake City. 
Our next trip is the boots and paddle trip. Um, that is in Montana. This is our longest trip. It's 14 days, July 8th through the 21st. Uh, it starts off in um, Bozeman, Montana, and we backpack in Yellowstone National Park, which is quite an epic place to get off the beaten path. Um, and it follows up on the Missouri River canoeing the same section of river that the infamous Lewis and Clark expedition um, once did long ago. And then our third summer expedition is the San Juan Islands. This is our shortest trip. It's seven days, July 23rd through the 29th, and it is sea kayaking on the ocean. We circumnavigate uh, Shaw Island um, outside of Lopez Island in San Juan Islands. So a little bit about why our trips are different. Um, overall, we're creating a tribe. We're, um, we start that with our guides. We hire professional experienced guides with multiple years of experience working with young people and families. Um, not only are we medical trained uh, to be wilderness guides, but we also have backgrounds in social work, wilderness therapy, exper experiential education, um, and more. Our guides are, are diverse, open, passionate, fun individuals that are excited to be out in the um, great outdoors with teenagers. Our focus is getting unplugged, disconnect from the devices, help students to uh, find other ways to social, socialize besides their, um, their devices, empowering them to work as a group. Uh, our programming is strength-based, which means we are really looking at empowering students to access their skills and their strengths. Um, uh, the way that we work with our groups uh, is all of these trips are expeditions. So it's the expedition life, which means you're changing camps every day. You're moving from point A to point B. You're packing up your things. You're getting organized. You're needing to be ready with the rest of the group. Um, this is a shared experience. So whether you're having beautiful sunny days or it's been raining all day, everyone is bonded within that good time and hard time, which makes the experience uh, more valuable to be sharing with each other. We use graduated challenges, which means on day one, students are learning how to do the activity or the task at hand or how to work with each other. And we give the challenge that is appropriate for them in the beginning. And we move on each day, building upon what they learned the day before. They're practicing uh, what they learn so that they can master the skills. So if it's canoe skills or outdoor cooking, or if it's communication or building healthy relationships. Um, we create that communication and feedback for the group to grow and to understand each other. The results that we have, um, that we see, are um, increasing skills in teamwork, leadership, outdoor living skills, and increased resilience in individuals, boosted confidence. Uh, we see students have uh, healthier relationships with the peers. Um, and also a sense of awe and wonder of the natural world. Um, a lot of times we get students that have not seen the landscapes that we are in. Um, I had a student from the New York City that had never been to Yellowstone or out West, and all he wanted to see was a bear. And he actually got to see one in Yellowstone. And it was the most uh, in awe-inspiring experience for this young person. So our trips, we have the three trips, but we can combine the trips. You can do one, two, or three of the trips. Um, some students are really into the outdoors and really want a full experience, and they can do a full 33 days. Um, some families have different plans throughout the summer, so maybe one trip date works better than the other. So we allow that um, enrollment to be one, two, or three trips. 
Some other facts about our trips is that it's all inclusive upon meeting at the destination. And each of our trips have different destination start and ends. We can accommodate for food allergies. Nobody, there's no experience necessary. Our guides can teach all the skills that students need to be successful on these trips. Um, we also have the gear. So uh, tents, sleeping bags, sleeping bags, all of those things do not need to be purchased. Uh, we have that uh, for your students, your kids to borrow. Um, we do provide a packing list so that your um, child can be um, outfitted in their personal clothing that meets the needs of the trip. It is 95% camping. That is the impact that we are going for. We want to make things simple and get out into these backcountry spaces uh, to work together as a team. And with that being said, the expeditions are full of surprises. It, an expedition is an adventure, a journey into the unknown. So itineraries are subject to change um, and we are prepared to teach and work with students when that arises. So a little summary, again, we've got the river and rocks trip. It's a canoe expedition that has canyoneering in the end. It's a start and end in Salt Lake City, Utah. We pick students up at the airport. Um, and then our next trip is boots and paddle. This is the longest trip, 14 days, July 8th through the 21st. Yellowstone National Park, Missouri River canoe expedition. This also has a one day whitewater rafting uh, experience that is the end of the trip celebrating. Uh, this trip starts in Bozeman, Montana and ends in Missoula, Montana. And then our uh, sea kayaking, again, it's the seven day trip circumnavigating the islands of the San Juan Islands starting and ending in Seattle. Now I put the prices in there because I want everyone to know that we are holding on to our 2022 prices until February 28th, 2023. Um, so if you are interested in signing your um, kids up for this, please do so before February 28th. Um, here's two testimonies from a mom and a therapist that was on another trip with us. Um, you know, the thing that stands out to me with our teen trips, um, we've been doing these three trips for the last four or five years. And Students and parents really want to find something unique uh, for what their what their child needs. Breakwater customizes to each individual student. So if there's a goal that a student has, for instance, we've had kids come in and say, I need to have more credits. Can I do my senior project on one of these trips? Then we help them do that. We have had um, students say that they have have a lot of problems with being social and connecting to other peers. We work on that healthy relationship building and, and work one-on-one -on -one with students as well as working with the group. So if you are interested and want to know more, uh, you can look on our website or email me uh, for questions and I'd be happy to answer all of them. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Um, the next and final presenter is the representative from ArtsBridge. Thank you, I'll just share my screen here. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Great, great. Um, well, my name is Hannah um, and I am Director of Operations at ArtsBridge and I'm excited to be here just for a couple minutes. Um, and tell you all a little bit about what we do. Um, so at ArtsBridge, we work with um, high school artists, uh, performing and visual artists um, to help them prepare for the college application uh, and audition process. So we do a couple of things. Um, first of all, year round, we offer college consulting uh, for art students. And then we also offer a variety of artistic training programs. So that's what I'll talk about right now. Um, oh, hold on. Oh, my slides are not moving ahead. There they are. Okay. Um, so our, our ArtsBridge summer programs, um, we are preparing students for their college auditions and their portfolio reviews. Uh, some of you might know uh, the college application process can be pretty daunting um, and it can be sometimes extra complicated for art students. So we like to prepare students as best as possible. Uh, and one of the best ways we found that we can do that um, is by connecting high school students with college faculty. So at all of our ArtsBridge summer programs, courses are taught by college faculty 
faculty from a variety of different uh, conservatories, colleges, and universities from across the country. Uh, and one of my favorite things about that is that our students get to experience a wide variety of college programs and a wide variety of teaching styles in just two weeks. Um, and for that two weeks, our students in our in-person programs uh, get to experience life and learning on a college campus, um, which I'll talk a little bit more about here. Oh, sorry, I'm having a little issue with my slides. Oh, there they are. Okay. Uh, so our ArtsBridge summer in-person programs, um, like I said, they're two, two week intensive summer programs uh, in 2023 will be hosted at Baldwin Wallace University in Ohio um, from July 21st to August 24th. And our first program that I'll talk about is our art song program. That's for our classical singers. Um, so these students uh, will take classes in vocal technique, diction and language, repertoire, acting for singers, that's an important one, uh, and performance and audition skills, as well as uh, private vocal coachings and voice lessons with our faculty. And uh, the next program I'll talk about is our dramatic acting program. So these students take a uh, wide variety of classes in different styles of acting technique. Uh, our students uh, learn about Meissner technique, about Shakespeare. Uh, they take movement classes as well as monologue work and classes to prepare them for their auditions. Um, and this dramatic acting program, as well as the art song program that I mentioned, are open to high school students 15 years and up um, of any grade level in high school. The next two programs I'll talk about are two musical theater programs. Uh, so for musical theater, we do split up our students uh, into grade level. So this program here that I'll talk about um, is for our rising seniors. Um, so our rising seniors take classes in singing technique, acting the song, uh, acting and monologue work, as well as dance classes and lots of audition prep work. And then next here, our Musical Theater Two students. Um, this program is for our younger students. So our rising juniors and our rising sophomores. Um, they take very similar courses to our rising seniors, um, but they do get to focus a little bit more on the craft and on their um, fundamental training um, and a little bit less on um, you know, choosing their audition songs and things like that. Um, and then next here, um, so those four programs that I mentioned before were our in-person programs that will be at Baldwin Wallace University uh, next summer. Um, and then we have one upcoming online program um, for our second year of our fashion design program. Um, it's an intensive five-day online program. Um, and students get all the supplies they need shipped directly to their homes, so you can participate from anywhere in the world. Um, and students will take classes with college faculty in 2D design skills and 3D design skills for fashion design. So for 2D design, that's things like um, mood boards and figure sketching, like you can see here. And then for 3D design, um, that's basics of garment construction and pattern making. Um, and details, dates, everything for our fashion design program will be coming out after the new year. So I'll just pop up here super quick um, while I talk a little bit more. Um, our ArtsBridge Summer faculty, as you can see here, come from a wide variety of institutions. So students really get um, to learn from so many different perspectives. Um, and if you go on our website, um, then you'll be able to see all of our programs and read about all of our faculty. Um, I will move on. You can just get a taste here. If any of this is interesting to you, um, you should know applications are due February 15th. Um, like I mentioned, um, uh, fashion design details for that program will be announced after the new year, uh, but for the rest of our programs, those applications are already open, so we're already accepting applications, um, and all of our application process, videos, portfolios, anything like that uh, happens online on our accepted page, um, which you can find super easily if you go to our website. Um, another super important thing, um, need-based scholarships and need-based application fee waivers are available, so definitely get in touch if you're interested in that. Um, before I go, I'll just touch on a couple other opportunities. We do a lot of cool things at ArtsBridge, um, including some upcoming short-term workshops that we have. Um, we have a theater workshop um, for acting and for musical theater students coming up uh, at the New School in New York uh, this January 7th and 8th. 
And then we have an online fashion workshop that same weekend as well, um, also taught by college faculty, both of those. Um, and then we also have in the fall a gap year program for theater students. Um, so that's for musical theater students and acting students. Um, more details to come soon online about that. Um, and then, like I mentioned before, we work with students year round on the college process uh, through our college consulting services. So I'll just pop my info up there right now. Um, like I said, my name's Hannah, um, and you can reach me at programs at artsbridge.com or give us a call, um, and I'd be happy to chat uh, anytime and let you know more. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Hannah. Um, so thanks to all the attendees for um, attending and keeping with us. And thanks to the panelists for taking time out of your schedule. Um, I know everyone, you come from all these different parts of the world. Um, Okay, and so that is the end of session three, and that is the end of Teen Life's first summer virtual fair. We do have other fairs coming up if they um, fit your schedule or whatever it might be. We also have all these lovely panelists here who are so happy to talk to you. Um, please feel free to ask questions and reach out to them. But otherwise, have a great weekend, everyone, and happy holidays. Thank you. Bye, guys.